Welcome back to Dot Shopper Media. My name is Mark Kerr and I'm here with the exclusive only one, Martin Schindler. Mark, moment mal. Das ist nicht richtig. Happened there? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Dart Shopper Media, and today I have the fantastic Martin Schindler. Martin, welcome, and uh, thanks for taking your time out of your busy schedule. You're here at Barnsley today. You've done your first day. Bit of trouble, though, with travel. How was, did your yeah. first day go? Well, um, I was playing today against Nick Fulwell. I lost uh, that one six five at a couple of match starts, but unfortunately I was not able to play with my really own darts. I mean, I, I take a set of darts for like half a year, play with them all the time, and then I switch but uh, because of the travel situation I was having a late flight yesterday because I had an event earlier on Saturday and uh, so we decided to do it like that then the flight was cancelled and because it was so late they weren't able to give me my luggage so I needed to wake up next morning four o'clock get back to the airport with a whole new suitcase trying to get some darts together everything like in the night and uh, yeah so everything that went, that could have gone wrong did go wrong. It, it really did. It really did. I mean, in the end, the most important thing is that I'm here and I was in a lot of trouble, a lot of very bad conditions. But in the end, I don't, I'm not trying to look for excuses. So I, I still try to go up there and play against Nick and try to win that one. I was in a good position. At, uh, yeah. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. And I'm sure that your fans will be frustrated. But like you say, you turned up, you did your best. Tomorrow's another day. For those who don't know, on social media, people think that you and I look alike, and I'm regularly tagged saying, good luck today, hope you play well. Have you heard that you look a bit like me, or that I look a bit like you? That's the first time I've heard it was uh, from you about uh, Yanni, and uh, yeah, now that uh, we saw each other, it was, there's definitely some kind of... Uh... Are you looking like? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Is it? And uh, yeah, obviously we did a fun part now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, um, no, I never heard it before. I mean, I never saw you before. I'm not really into the Twitter game. I'm more like an Instagram user and uh, yeah. Well, I think that your wife and my girlfriend are very lucky. Now, look, as we always do, I'm going to start you off with a few speed round questions. There's no right or wrong, so just answer whatever comes to mind first. Ready? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Beer or wine? Beer. I'm German, I can't say anything. <laughs> Winning the world or a healthy, long and happy life? T take the world. I'm going to take the world. <laughs> Chinese or Indian takeaway? Um, probably Chinese. Germany or the Caribbean? Oh, Caribbean is nice, but I'm going to stick with Germany. Greaves or Littler? Bo Greaves or Littler? Oh, Littler. Yes. Littler? Sure. Never watch TV again or never go on holiday again? Never watch TV again. Okay. Barry Hearn or Matt Porter? Barry Hearn. Win the World Championships but never return to Germany or win the lottery and never leave Germany again? I'll take the first one. Yeah, yeah. A simple explanation to that. Don't Win the world championships, <laughs> but you never return to Germany. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's simple explanation to that. We'll if talk about that a bit. Yeah, okay, we, we can. No worries. Uh, night in watching TV or a night down the pub? Uh, yeah, watching TV. Nice. Yeah. Well, look, we got you nicely warmed up now. Now, I'd like to extend into that with a rumour that I heard. Now, I heard that you used to be a steward or security before you became a darts player. Is that true? Well, I was uh, working at the PDC European events as a steward, I really was, yeah. Well, I mean, that's quite interesting. You have to be quite tough for that. So if you were to have a fight with, say, Mr. Muscles, Gerwin Price, who would win? <laughs> well, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. Uh, as a steward, you never meant to fight. The securities are there to probably take a fight or something. As a steward, you just need to make sure you're not passing through the door, for example, or this is your area, this is not your area, so I wasn't basically fighting anyone, but if I had to, I probably wouldn't, would, would take it as a man. <laughs> <laughs> now look, we're obviously just having fun here to get you started, but how did your darting journey begin? Uh, were you a youngster or, or did you sort of come into it a bit later on? 
Well, uh, I, I think I was young. Uh, I was definitely young when I saw true darts for the first time. When I say true darts, I mean uh, steel dart for the first time because uh, uh, at home, when I started to get known to dart, it was with Subtip, you know, the little board just on just on the wall, playing with Subtip on there, and it was, yeah, nothing special. Then we saw it on TV with steel, steel Tip, and then I started, or we started to play with my father, and I started to enjoy it, it was good. And then when I was 15, he said to me, Martin, you're, you're too good, we have to look out for, for, for a club. And that's how uh, my journey began. Yeah. yeah, 15 years old, right? Yeah. I think I started in my 30s, so I was very late to it, but uh, absolutely loved it. And uh, yeah, 15 years old, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so next we have a question from one of our subscribers. How do you aim from your forehead? Nope. So I think that they're talking about your technique here and suggesting that you've got quite a high throw. How, how, how do you throw for us? Well, it is a, there was a time when I was really going up and upper, but uh, I was uh, sawing in, 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 in a video from me playing in, in about uh, 2019, maybe 2020. And then I started to go back down again. So I'm now about my eye, my, my scar. Yeah. which is like basically the side of my eye, so I can go like straight from the, my right eye because my right eye is my strong eye. Yeah. So I'm just going like this, but not anymore from my forehead. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. And the scar wasn't specifically just from the dark kicking. <laughs> I would wish, would hurt less. <laughs> now, do you have any heroes within darts uh, or players that sort of looked up to or that helped you along your way? Well, I was always uh, looking up to Gary Anderson because I just loved his way of playing because he was always looking so simple and was always going 60, 60, 60, especially in 2011, 2012 when he reached the World Finals and uh, won the Premier League and stuff. It was just like always 180, 180. It was looking so simple. I was like, it looks amazing. I want to I wanna play like it. And I think that Gary Anderson, everyone mentions Gary Anderson as well and his throw obviously just brings it up to his eye and then just goes full extension. You're just like, oh, it's just, yeah, I'll just put one in the treble 20 each time. Effortless throw. Yeah, if it would be easy like that, you know, just aim for it, go for it and hit it. I think we all would be world champions then, but yeah. it's not Sadly that easy, not. is it? <laughs> You've got much more of a chance than I have, though, so we'll back you for that one. <laughs> now, I asked Greaves or Littler, and you said Littler. So do you think that Littler's the most promising youth player that we've seen? All I have to say, he's just, he's just 16 years of age, is he? And he was already making a big effort in the in, in, uh, UK Open. I think he qualified for the Worlds now and this year already through the development tour. He won the Super Series uh, League, uh, how it is called. So uh, uh, the Modus, Modus League. Yeah, and he's, he with 16 years of age. And that's incredible, just just the way he's he's like loving the stage and stuff. but. I mean, with 16, a lot of things can happen. You, you never know it. I mean, now is the time for him. Uh, enjoy the moment, but don't relax on your success. You know, you have to keep going. That's what he has to do. And But I think he's a very promising player. But to be honest, to answer a question between Greaves and Littler, it's just, it's difficult, isn't it? It is, it is. And I, I think that, that Greaves is obviously the, the, the most promising female player that I've certainly seen. Over the last few years, you just uh, scary. Absolutely, absolutely, scary. Uh, absolutely, totally. I mean, just just from the effort to win all the like all the women's series, on and on again, it's amazing as well. But yeah, you have to decide. That's now, what you said to me. Absolutely, you have to decide. <laughs> so, no right or wrong, and I'm sure no one will take offence. But um, what's your worst and best playing venue, and why? Worst, worst venue. I have to think about it. I am with the best venue. I'm. I would go with Risa. I've been in Risa a couple of times now, and the first 3D time I went to the third round was in Risa, I think. And then now I obviously had this year mm -hmm. my first European semi-final in in Risa, so it's not a bad place. And yeah, probably worst place for me. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say. I don't know any place where I've been and never really won. 
at the match play, but match play is like, you know, it's the top 32 of the world, but... <sighs> Worst place is difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going with the match play because I played there twice, lost there twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I love I loved the venue, I have to say. It's a great venue. It's, it's really enjoyable. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> Uh, worst and best experience in the arts? Well, one of my best experience was the day, I think, when I managed to qualify for the Grand Slam and also managed to qualify for the final of the development tour, uh, uh, World Youth Championship, that's, that's it. So, And one day I was like winning two tournaments, which was very nice. And uh, yeah, one of my worst experiences like losing the tour card. You know, it was a difficult time back then, you know, like going up to events, going to lose again, going to lose again, starting to worry about what is going to be, maybe you're going maybe you're gonna have to stop darts and stuff like that. But yeah, I was I was aware of the fact that even though I'm not going to stick with my tour card, I'm definitely not going to stop playing darts for for passion. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're glad you didn't. And now who who's your best mate on the tour? Well, before a couple of years, it was Soren Leichbacher, definitely, just having a good uh, connection with him. But now he's not uh, playing the tour really anymore. So I would say really the, the, the German guys, I, I really understand with them good. So Gabriel Florian, uh, Daniel Ricardo, they're very nice. Pascal as well, he's also a good guy. And uh, apart from the Germans, it's uh, somebody like George Gillingen. I really understand well George, also Ted I have a... Good talks with him as well. And yeah, I can. Richie Atos also. I thought you said Daniel Ricciardo then. I was like, Formula One driver, so you're mixing your. Uh... No. <laughs> no. No. What did I say? I thought you said Daniel, and then maybe it was Daniel and Ricciardo, but I was like, Daniel Ricciardo. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Hanging Dan out with Formula One drivers. Yeah, no, no. Dan Daniel Close and Ricciardo Pietrecco. <laughs> Pietrecco, I love him. <laughs> Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Ten year recount. So, um, is there anyone you don't get on with and why? Not going to tell them. <laughs> Not going to tell them. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, it's always better for everybody, but there have been some uh, confrontations due to situations and maybe, maybe sometimes you take things too seriously. Maybe uh, sometimes the other ones are taking things too seriously and depends, but... Um, you don't have to be friends with anyone here normally because this is for your living. This is where you're trying to get money from. This is where you start making a living and everything. And so you don't need to be best friends with everybody. But I'm not going to tell you. No, fair enough. When yeah. tensions are high and there's a lot at stake, it's understandable. So, yeah. um, Any naughtiness or pranks that you can share with us from behind the scenes? Yeah. When we are going to the venue, the... You're not allowed to bring drinks like soft drinks, like Sprite, Coke, okay. or something else, because uh, they want you to buy it at the venue. Just normal things, is it? Um, and the securities always uh, look in for the cases, and they're always taking the stuff, all of my cases, you know, my darts, my next setup darts, <laughs> for example, it's tissues, my earphones, they're always checking up for my bag because. They just, they're making fun of it. And I'm like, oh, hey, come on, what are you doing? Oh, why is it always me, you know? Um, I'm exactly the same. Every time I go through security, my bag is the one that gets checked. Even if it's the random drug check, always checked, or I've got loads of electronics on me. So I'm always constantly stopping yeah. people. So. Yeah, exactly. It was like, it's always like, they're taking me, they're making fun of it, taking everything out, because I have to say, Maybe sometimes a little bit too messy with my case, and yeah. I thought you were going to say some of your uh, some of your German friends are going to be putting drinks in your case so you get stopped. <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh... So they haven't played pranks on you like that at the airport. No, not at the airport. No, no, no. Uh, so what is the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in darts? Really embarrassing. Well, uh, what I remember this year UK Open, I was uh, playing against Gildan and I, uh, I wasn't playing good at all and trying to get into the game again and again and again. And I was on 147 and I had the 60, I had the 51 and I was going for 36 and it had slipped and it, it was nearly at the triple 18. So I nearly busted. 
147. I mean, it can happen, you know, yeah, under, yeah. under pressure. Sometimes the dart can slip. Uh, I think it was also in, in an angle like this in the board. Normally my darts go in like this, yeah. but the dart went like, like, like this because it slipped. And yeah, I was, that was probably an embarrassing moment. But uh, I mean, it depends how you would say what means embarrassing. Um, we also had a situation with Max uh, at the World Cup. Like we were doing the Ronaldo celebration together, what uh, Ronaldo used to do with Marcelo. Yeah. And then me and Max jumped and Max was like <laughs> going all over the table. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then the table fell over, all the water was on the ground. Also probably, but wasn't embarrassing for me. No, you loved it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we've been a team, so... Yeah, when he hey. felt embarrassing, I have felt embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> sure there was more embarrassment. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking at him going, you're, yeah, you're was, an absolute fool. Yeah, it was, was absolutely funny for me, yeah. <laughs> now, in the speed round, I asked, would you rather win the World Championships but never return to Germany again, or win the lottery and never leave Germany again? Now, you chose the first option, which is to win the World Championships but never return to Germany again. Why did you choose that? Well, because I think if you're going to win the Worlds, they're going to take you for the Premier League. I think they have to, just from the ranking money, because then you are in the top four. And um, then you have to move to England anyway, because there's, uh, there are going to be so many tournaments and, uh, with, with the Premier League uh, in England. So I decided to do it like that. So you think of one, I have to move on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's always a thought you have to play with, especially when, when you're not from England or not from the island at all, that maybe consider it to move here because it just makes things so much easier. But for me now, I have a wife, I have a child. For the child, it's good because she can learn German and English at the same time, which makes it for her future very good, I think. And for my wife, it can be difficult because she has to learn English properly first to really be able and then also she has to work here and stuff also, always some steps but in that situation I mean if I'm going to be world champion maybe she doesn't have to work anymore maybe. Hey, you're the world champion you can bring the family over from Germany <laughs> yeah I definitely would then I definitely yeah, would. Fair enough. now back to reality uh, what do you think of women's stars and, and who else outside of Greaves who we, should we be looking for well, obviously, there's, uh, there's Bo Grief. Fallon is also having a lot of time, uh, or is still having a lot of time. Uh, she's also young. Um, not quite sure, I have to say, because not very much looking up to the women's series, not also not looking up for development. And I stuff. think they're the two that obviously get lots of headlines, but I yeah. mean, I've, I've been trying to watch more, uh, more women's darts and, and see, and there's, there's still... I mean, there's a little bit of discrepancy between sort of some of the standard that's, that, that, that hits on the top end from, um, from the pro men. But at the same time, it's, it's catching up. Like with, with Bo, certainly, Fallon hit a nine data, uh, which is, I think, the first televised one. But she's hit them before. So it's like, OK, we've actually got quite a lot of female talent coming through. Yeah, obviously. And they're going to be better and better with, with the years. But, um, yeah, like I said before, I'm not really looking... For the women's series, I'm also not looking for the, the development tour as well, for the challenge tour as well. You know, we are we are busy enough, yeah, yeah. just for <laughs> just for looking up for ourselves. You know, like I said before, I've, I've have I have a family. Um, I still have to play darts uh, at the tournaments as well, so not really looking up for everything. No, I'm I'm honest with that. Absolutely so, fair but, enough. And the thing is, I think when you're at this stage, a lot of people don't know about it because they're so focused. You have to be at that elite level. It's like I'm focused on kind of what I'm doing, not, you know, if I'm looking at what the other people are doing, I'm not focusing enough on myself. It, it is, it is, it is. Maybe it sounds a little bit harsh, but it is. No, it's true. Uh, another subscriber question here. So a hot topic at the moment is the trans involvement in sport. What are your thoughts generally and in darts specifically? Well, I think... Um, in this situation where you are going to have like a man, an originally man, going to the women as a, as a trans woman, um, then it's going to be difficult, I would say, because it, there is just a difference between the male body and the female body, in my opinion. 
And I think there already have been some results in, in sports um, where you can see when trans women go into the women's sports, they're going to dominate it because this is like, this is just biology in that case. I mean, don't get me wrong, and anybody can feel like they want this. This is not the problem, but just for sports to make sure it's going to be competitive, maybe they have to make cuts there. Maybe they should put all, all trans people into like one extra competition. Maybe that's the best way. And in darts, I think uh, there should be no problem at all with having trans people with us because we are not running, we are not throwing, you know, we, uh, we are not throwing like heavy, uh, like like a, an athletics, you know what I mean? I'm don't, yeah. I don't know the English word. Um, in darts, uh, Fallon showed it. You know, there's there in darts, there's no real difference between men or female, uh, because it, it's just like it's it's not hard to throw darts, and it's not you have to throw stronger, you you have to throw quicker. You just need to throw it exactly where it have to be, and there's no difference at all. So I think in in darts, it's not a problem at all with the trans people with the trans women or trans men, doesn't matter. But in, in, in sports like, for example, football, or maybe like running, 100 meter sprints, maybe there it's going to be difficult, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, let's sway away from politics yeah. now, but thank you for the question. Uh, let's discuss one of my favorite videos of you, mimicking players. <laughs> so how did that come about and who was your first impression of? Uh, you mean in the video? Or? Yeah, in the video. So we've seen you doing impressions of different pl uh, different pro players. Who was your first impression and uh, how did that come about? Oh, I'm not quite sure who was the first one. Probably was Newton or something. Okay. Was it Wes? I can't remember who the first one was. Oh, I, I thought you know it. But uh, um, how it started is when I was younger and uh, started to watch darts, I was uh, trying not to imitate the professionals, but I was trying to copy them just in case I'm going to hit things with like their throw yeah. because I was not sure about my throw and obviously they're professionals so their throw have to be good in a way. So I started to do it like like Adrian Lewis, like like this one, like Gary Anderson, like uh, Mervyn King with the uh, uh, rolling back with the barrel. Um, mostly it have been all Older generations, like 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 I said, ten to fifteen years ago. Also Wayne Marner with the and the and the Phil Taylor was one of my favorites. As yeah. Well. Also, was the uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah the the eyes and the mouth is important just for imitating. But but uh, I was I was trying to throw it. Uh, Raymond is also was also it's not easy to to copy because he's just throwing so smooth and also the way he's grabbing the dart it was not looking easy. And uh, I, I was trying to, and we, we, we thought it's going to be a funny thing, imitating the place, and yeah, it, it had a great result. In clicks and everything, it had a great result. Have you worked on any new impressions, and can we get any sneak previews? No, not yet, no. The, t the time for, for copying somebody else is, is like over, because uh, now it's uh, time to be professional, now it's time to focus on important things I have to say and in that case it's important. Fair please. enough well I'll see if I can tease you on social media into doing some new ones but uh, <laughs> focus on your darts. Now I believe you recently had an anniversary with your wife congratulations. Thank you. And how did you both meet? How did uh, my wife and I meet? Um, we have 2023 so back ago nine years um, at, a, at a, a German ranking tournament in darts. And this is where we met, and uh, I don't know how it went that we started to talk with each other, but this is how we met the first time, and um, yeah, there definitely was some kind of sparkles since, since the first time we met, but it took some time for both of us to finally get to each other, but uh, yeah, in the end was good because now we're sticking together now we're married now we have a children yeah a uh, nice beautiful daughter yeah uh, nice beautiful daughter have you have you tried to put any darts in her hand yet or is she doing no 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 <laughs> she can do whatever she likes she doesn't need to play darts this is not i'm not that uh, you know i'm your father and uh, <laughs> i play darts so you have to play darts not not going to be like 
Uh, how is it being a fairly new father? Is it hard with all the travel and uh, the darting commitments? Yeah, of course it is hard. I mean, uh, I, I was playing more darts when we managed to bring our daughter to sleep because sometimes, especially when we're trying to get her to sleep, it was always a lot of, lot of crying and, and stuff. And so we decided just going to play after we tried to manage to get her to sleep. So... Um, this is one correction I needed to, 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 to take, probably about like past a half year. We're trying to get um, through the phase when we, are, yeah, when we can't talk to our daughter about problems, where we just have to solve the problems. And sometimes with a little children, you just cannot solve the problems. It's uh, sometimes difficult and um, we, we're trying to do our best. And I think uh, we, we did very well. And yeah, we, we try to find a way, we manage to find a way. And yeah, it's, it's hard, but it's also a good thing. And it, uh, it really makes you feel patience in another way. I really have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before as well. <laughs> now, you obviously moved from bowls to deep holes. Yeah. How did that come about? And for those who don't know about deep holes, can you tell us a bit about it? Well, Deep Pulse is our own band, and uh, the, the, the contract with Bulls was uh, extending, expanding, what is it? When, when it's, it's uh, finishing. When it's finishing. Yeah, the, the, the contract was about to finish, and uh, yeah, I, it was in a time when I lost my tour card, so obviously I, can, I could understand Bulls when they were going to say, yeah, maybe we're going to stick together, but we can't do it with the same conditions. I totally understand me. Yeah, nothing bad, nothing wrong with uh, the behavior from Bulls there. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we thought, okay, maybe we're just going to, to finish there. And we try our own thing, you know. We, we try to do it for ourselves. And so we build uh, our company just from, like, nothing to something now. Yeah, obviously not a big, like, Target or Venmo or something else. But we, we try to do it for ourselves, for, for me, and, um, yeah, maybe for my future as well. Maybe in a time when, yeah, my daughter is going to be 18, 18 more years old, probably 30. Maybe then, you know, you can probably sell the company, you can do something else with it. And maybe it's going to give us some more options for the future. So, yeah, it's, it's something we created for ourselves. And we're, we're hoping that it works. So we don't have your darts here today, but I'll put them up on the screen. So talk us through your new darts. Uh, what do you like about the dart and what's different from perhaps uh, your previous dart? Yeah, just, just for the situation, the reason why my darts are not here is because of the airport situation. Yeah? Just to make sure. <laughs> uh, uh, my darts, yeah, they are like uh, shaped like old Benito darts. And uh, what we did was we, make, we made them a little bit uh, smaller in the end and also a little bit smaller at the front. So we make it a little bit more sharpened, so to say. And then we had we have the uh, brick grip, which I think is very unique. Never saw anything like it. And it's also, uh, yeah, very matching, isn't it? Um, for the wall. Yeah, for the wall, yeah. I don't think I need to. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, we've got new subscribers. Yeah, got new prob viewers. <laughs> probably. Probably. And uh, yeah, it, um, it is a very nice shaped dart, in my opinion. It, it's like for, for maybe for tall players, also maybe for small players, a very good option if they are struggling to find the right angle for them to throw because it normally goes always like, like this in the board. Mm -hmm. And that's one good reason for me because they're going into like that so I can throw the other dart just always at it. So I scored a lot of 180s with them because also of the torpedo shape, if I describe it like that. So yeah, it's, this is how my dart is, is built and it's not bad, is it? No, it's not, no, no, no. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll obviously, like I say, I'll put them up and uh, people will enjoy looking at the Depot's darts. Now, what are your plans for the brand moving forwards? Obviously, I know it's quite early days. Do you think that you'll have other, are other players interested in, in, in any of your darts and things? Are there plans to kind of, um, is it, is it going to be sold everywhere? What's, what's your plans? Yeah, we, I think we are going to try to, to sell it like everywhere. It depends, you know, whoever wants the darts, who can get the darts. 
but that is the plan what we are trying to do. Obviously, it's it's not an easy situation if you have company after company asking and asking, because then you have to produce them first, and to produce them first in such a big amount of uh, capacity, then you just need to put in a lot of money first, a lot of money first, and this is not easy. So you need to start somewhere, and then you build, and you build, and you build in that case, and uh, yeah. The plan is to try and sell my darts uh, everywhere, and maybe in the future we're going to take other players. Maybe not, but I don't know. I don't know yet. First, we have focus on the things in front of us. We have uh, some some tasks uh, to work on now with with you, yeah, Faisal, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> with uh, Martin Schindler 2.0. Yeah, right. yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> No, we are we are looking forward to to um, working together and also for future and stuff and yeah absolutely available at Dart Shopper. So now picture the scene: you're playing at the World Championships at the final, and your darts have broken, and you have no spares. You have the whole table of every player's pro darts there. Whose do you pick to play? Except of mine. Except of yours. Mm. I, I probably I would take a dad who's like probably same length of mine, so with total uh, length, not only the barrel, also with uh, uh, the stem and the flight. But it's difficult to say because I don't know exactly how the other darts are working. I'm trying to to picture it, uh, but I, I would say probably dart of Gary Anderson because uh, when when I was uh, uh, back in 2015. I was playing with Gary Anderson phase three, which is the same that he's using right now, so probably going, just going to take that. Something but, that feels familiar that you've used before. But yeah, it's a, it's a situation. You're asking for situations I really yeah, have to yeah. say. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> you're there. Oh, who do I pick? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and what about plans for you for the future? What are your plans? My, my plan is like to just to make sure that... Um, for the future, I don't need to work anymore when I'm old enough. So trying to find a way for investments, stuff like that. Maybe, uh, uh, what is uh, the English word? Facilities? Or property? Properties, that's the word. <laughs> Not facilities, properties. Um, trying to look out for them just to rent places to people. Uh, because um, there's, there's a difference as a normal employee and uh, self-employed probably the same in uh, England as well, because if you're self-employed, you're not paying into the thing you get when you turn 65. Your retirement, yeah. Your retirement, exactly, yeah. And so need to find our way. This is a uh, plan for the future also. My plan for the future is um, with my wife, with my child, going on beautiful vacations and stuff like that. And yeah. And, and within darts? And in darts. I'm always trying to to keep it low because I think it's always not so not so clever to to say what you really want because then maybe you put a lot of pressure on it. But I can say, but what is the truth? I want to win as much as possible. Maybe I know that the the uh, competition is very hard. Maybe it's never going to be that I'm going to be a world champion. Maybe, but maybe it's going to be that I'm going to be world champion. Maybe you the new Deeples darts. That's maybe, maybe. Maybe that's what we're going need. to stick with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that little competitive edge. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. We will see, yeah. Um, it's uh, The plan is just to keep going all the time, always trying to get better in the rankings and stuff. But I don't want to promise too much, but I want to win as much as possible. And any plans for any holidays coming up? Any adventures? Well, next year we are going to Greece. That's the plan, yeah. I'm hoping to go maybe the end of September. Don't know where yet, last minute. With all the plane issues that you've had, we should book last minute, I think. But uh, look, Martin, thank you for the interview today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, and we can finally put to bed the conspiracy that we are, in fact, the same person. <laughs> but maybe we are. Yeah, no, it's just a conspiracy. <laughs> just a conspiracy <laughs> anyway we're Thank going to now go and we're going to see if we can beat Chris Dobie's rapid 
balloon pop challenge time. Think you can do it? We try. We will try. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Dark Shopper Media. If you want to ask any questions to the pros, add it in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to the number one dark shop in the world, Dark Chopper. Thanks very much.